few weeks, and we will uh, probably let you know about that promotion and, you know, a little after two weeks. Hey, Mr. Proliard. Um, thank you. I needed that position. I needed that raise, man. Dang, now I can't get that new car. How could I lose focus like that? Great job, Ron. Great job. You blew it. Man, stop all our craziness. I'm a strong, educated black man. I'm gonna make a name for myself. I'm gonna have a corner office with window. You know what? Make that four windows. Cause you know why? It's all about you. So what do you see when you look in your mirror? Do you see pride, envy, strength, success, a driven person, the popular person at your high school, maybe the not so popular person at your high school? Who do you see when you look into your mirror? You know, my, uh, I have three kids, and when my, my first was born, uh, Blake, I remember bringing him home, he was... He, looked a beautiful kid, and you're just bringing him home. And those first couple months of the sleepless nights, and finally you get through, and they start sleeping through the night, and you're like, this, is a, this kid is amazing. And then uh, they start crawling, and they start getting into things, but you're th you still think, like, wow, they, this is like a perfect kid. And then they start walking, and you start going, okay, not so perfect. And then one day, you have someone over to your house, and there's another little kid there, and the two of them are playing, and then all of a sudden you hear the words, and you're like, where'd that come from? And they go, mine. Mine. I didn't teach my kid that. But something inside of every child and every one of us goes, mine. There's this selfishness, this desire within us for the world to revolve around you and I. And for in today's society, it's summed up in this. Let me snap a selfie of myself, of my world, of what's going on, and let me post it so the whole world can know all about me and what's going on. And there's something that, for you and I, is a struggle. It's this struggle with the world being about me or maybe there's something more than it just being about me. So on New Year's Eve, I was watching uh, the ball drop and I was flipping through channels because I hate watching commercials. And so you flip to all these different channels and they're all doing the same thing. They're interviewing people about their New Year's resolutions. And what was interesting as I was preparing for this morning, I was thinking back to all those people that had these New Year's resolutions. They were all about themselves. I want to travel, I want a better job, I want to get out of debt. It was all about their own world. And why wasn't it that just one person, one person who had a New Year's resolution to say, I want to be less prideful and more humble? You know why? Because that is the very opposite of who we are on the inside without Jesus transforming us. Because on the inside, when, when Jesus transforms us, he calls us to something different. He calls us to break our mirror and to live a life that's completely different than what we were when we were a year old and we're saying, mine, that's my toy. This is my world. This is me. This is me being successful. And so this morning, I want us to dive into some scripture that points very specifically to this idea of breaking your mirror, breaking our mirror, and to say, what does it mean to live for Christ in a way that shatters that mirror 
It makes us look at the world just a little differently. Now this morning, I want to tell you, it is hard to preach this sermon because all week I'm going through this, I'm going, man, I fall short. Man, I am not this person that is just described in scripture. But you know what? It's a journey. I want to encourage you to be on this journey with me because Fairfield County, Connecticut, the world needs a church who will live out what we're going to talk about this morning. And so I pray that you have the courage, along with myself, to live this out. So if, you're, if you have your Bibles, where you can just look at the screen, we're going to look, look at Philippians 2, 3 through 7. This is one of my favorite uh, scriptures uh, because it's really hard to live out. But when I live it out in just a little bit, what happens to my world is transformed. And so here's what we find in Philippians 2, 3 through 7. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. That's what our world needs. And that, this morning, is what I hope you will start to struggle with, to say, how do I live out this scripture? And there's a couple ideas and things that that stuck out to me as I was reading through this and studying through it. And the first is this, is that breaking our mirror starts with my mindset. It is a daily battle for your mind to think differently because you will naturally wake up in the morning and go, I need this, I want that, I deserve this, these are my expectations for today. And those most often will revolve just around you and what you need and what you think you need. And when we start to, though, struggle and say, There is something different here that God has a desire for me to live differently. You start this battle with your mind to go, there's something that says it doesn't just have to be about me and mine, but that I can change my perspective, my outlook, my expectations to say, you know what? I want to be more like Christ. When I was on missions trips, uh, and I've been on a, on a few with students here at the, at the church when I was serving as a high school youth pastor. I would take students away, in, even adults, and we would go away, and before we would go away, I would change their mindset. Because if we didn't change our mindset before getting on a plane and traveling somewhere, we would expect the same things that we got every day. Comfortable living situation, clean water, food, that the trip would revolve around me and my needs. And before we went, I said, on a missions trip, you deserve nothing. You are here spending your money, your time to go and serve someone else. And so just changing that mindset right there changed the entire trip. And you would see people be selfless for an entire week just because in our mind we change it from saying this trip revolves around me to this trip revolves around what I'm doing for God to serve other people. A couple weeks ago, Pastor Steve preached a sermon on joy. And it was a great sermon. I went home and I I was having joy. It was December and uh, just excited about what what was coming. And the two days prior, I had uh, painted a whole bunch of rooms upstairs for my kids. We had changed rooms and I had done all this work. And I was just like, okay, I got a couple weeks not to do any uh, housework and uh, projects. And I get home, and I'm in my, our lower ba- in our downstairs bathroom, and I notice water on the floor. And so I have to investigate. I go a little more investigation. It requires me to take out the toilet. Then it requires me to take out the sink. Then it requires to take off uh, the molding around the side. And then finally, to take up the floor. And I take up the floor, and I realize that for months... My bathroom has been leaking, and it's not just like just a little patch. It's the whole floor into the hallway. Now, my kids and my wife, they're upstairs. They don't even know what's going on. I am sitting on the couch, and I want to cry. 
I'm like, seriously, this is what I, I get today? And then my mind triggered right to the sermon of joy. And then my mind went to my trips to Haiti in bathrooms and how I was a part of a project to help build 1,287 bathrooms. And I realized that what I was looking at in my bathroom was a first world problem. Because upstairs I had two working bathrooms. It was just a mind shift for me. I could have been miserable for the next couple days, taken out on my kids, taken out on my wife, and just been this kind of, it's all about me, woe is me, and I turned it. And I realized how truly blessed I was, and I sat on that couch in tears going, thank you, God. I am truly blessed. And yes, this is a pain, but I'll get through it, but I am truly blessed. Every day is a battle. Every day is a battle, and how are you going to win that battle? The second thing we see in this scripture is this, is that Jesus is our mentor in breaking our mirror. And this idea of mentor is someone who has shown us and given us an example and then encourages us to do the same as he did. Who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. You know, when Jesus looks in the mirror, Jesus saw God. And yet, he put that aside. And the, the scriptures say, rather, he had the option. He could have used his status here on earth in a different way, and yet he said, rather, I am coming to serve. I am coming to give my life for all those that need to be saved. What better example for us of someone who had everything and yet put it all aside for the needs of you and I. You know, no other religious leader has ever done that. That's what makes Christianity so different than every other religion, is that our Lord Jesus gave up his status and who he was to serve you and I. Now, last night, I, was, uh, I had to privilege my, one of my sons. We have this large kid's Bible. It's like 500 pages, and he's wanted to read through the entire Bible. So I got the privilege of reading the Bible last night, and we were reading through, through uh, starting with uh, Palm Sunday, all the way through uh, the crucifixion, the resurrection. And I was reading it. I was dwelling on the idea that of what I'm speaking on this morning. I realized that last week, how many times Jesus was challenged to use his status as the Son of God to free himself or to, to conquer what was happening? And yet every time, he just took it because he knew that there was a greater purpose for him than his own life. And how striking that, that is for us that our Savior gave up everything for you and I. Now, what does it mean to break a mirror. This is what it means. You remember Pastor Steve said he doesn't like Chip and Joanna Gaines? I love Chip and Joanna Gaines. <laughs> See, when we break our mirror, and when Jesus broke his mirror, something was revealed behind the mirror. And let's just see what that is. hard to break your own mirror. You see what is behind the mirror? Jesus' life and our own life and to others. See, we so often, we get this view that our world is just about us and we have this mental picture that we walk around with every day that's just focused on us. What was amazing about Jesus, if you look in the Gospels, every time there was a need of someone else, he responded. He's walking and a woman just touches his garb and his power goes out from him. He realizes it. He wasn't on his cell phone going, up. Oh, I just missed it. 
every conversation. A man in a tree, he calls down and says, I want to go to your house today. Every moment, Jesus did not miss the people around him. See, when we have our mirror up, we miss it. When we have our cell phone in front of our face, we miss it. There's so much to this world and to us as Christians if we just get past our own mirror. Jesus broke his mirror, and he was able to see all the people in front of him. How about you and I? The third thing that we see in this scripture is this, is breaking our mirror is the ultimate act of humility. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. One of my favorite memories in high school was I got the opportunity to go on a few trips to Russia right after the Iron Curtain fell and to teach teenagers about what it means to know Jesus the way that I knew Jesus. Now, I was in in high school, and I had desires of great food, comfort, and all those things. And on these trips, I was stripped of all that. The food was terrible. I I was going hungry every single day. We didn't sleep. The cots were, were terrible. Everything about the physical, about what I wanted for my own comfort was taken away. But what was amazing about that, those trips for me was I got the opportunity to meet people's needs. And what their needs were were they had never heard about Jesus before. I could stand in a room of 400 teenagers and share about Jesus. It was the first time many of them had ever heard about Jesus or even seen a Bible. And what I learned there and what I hope you will see is that living in humility is all about other people's welfare, about their interests and not your own. You putting aside all that you think you deserve and you saying it's about others. In the book, um, From Pride to Humility, Stuart Scott says this, when someone is humble, they are focused on God and others, not self. Even their focus on others is out of a desire to love and glorify God. A, A humble person's goal is to elevate God and encourage others. In short, they no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose on their behalf. What an amazing image of what humility is. It's it's a desire to love and to glorify God, to elevate him and to encourage others. See, that's what breaking our mirror is all about. So elevating him, our creator, our Lord, our savior, and saying it's all about you, and at the same time, encouraging those around us, encouraging those in your own view each and every day. So who in your life is someone that you see as being humble? Usually it's the one that you're attracted to to say, hey, I want to follow them. You want to be around humble people because you know what? When you're around them, you're encouraged. Jesus lived a life of humility and people all the time were coming to him. There's people in your own life that you see who are humble that are attracting others to them. Are people attracted to you and to your humility? Are people following you and going, I want to be like you because you're different. You're not consumed with the selfie, with who you are and your own status, your own needs. You're, con- you're consumed with helping others around you. There's a couple of things I want to encourage you with today to break your mirror. And the first is pray every time you're in front of a mirror. Every time this week, from the morning to lunch to afternoon when you're going to sleep, pray every time and say, God, help me right now not to be focused on myself, but to see other people, to see their needs, and for me to put aside my expectations of what I need so I can serve them. Just pray that and see how God uses you this week in that way. Second is to go on a mission trip in 2018. If you've never been on a mission trip, as I look back at my life, I have been shaped 
so much in, in how I strive to live out Philippians 2 by going on mission trips, by seeing the world and seeing how blessed I am, but how I can give of myself to others. And so maybe that's for you uh, this year. Tell your kids that you're proud of them. Parents, instead of seeing what you want to see or just seeing your kids mess up, this week, catch them doing good things and encourage them. Your kids are being torn down left and right, but you at home, be the place, be the safety, be the, the person that says, you know what, I'm going to pay attention to what's going on. I know I struggle with this all the time of trying to catch my kids doing the right thing, but when I do, it builds them up, it encourages them. Each day at work, look to someone else's interests. It is so easy at work to get consumed in your job, in your job description, in what you are supposed to do, that you miss out on the people around you in your office. This week, just take a little time each day to say, hey, how can I encourage someone else, meet someone else's needs this week? Don't compete with others, build them up. We live in Fairfield County. I think it's one of the most competitive counties in the world. We are at each other. We want to get ahead of the person who is next to us. Don't compete this week, but encourage. Build someone up. Help them to get ahead of where you're at. That's what Christ did for us. We need to be doing that for others. Serve your spouse this week. What's one thing that your spouse hates to do and you're going to do it with joy this week because you know what? You love your spouse and you want to encourage them this week. Take that one thing and say, I'm doing it all week and then make it a habit. Make it a discipline that you're going to do that and you're just going to honor your spouse in loving them. And then lastly, take a break from social media. I got some Snickers, I like it. You know, a study just came out that the majority of people, after they scroll through their Facebook, Instagram, whatever else you're on, are more depressed than when they started before they picked up their phone. You know what that's doing? It's a self-reflection. You're comparing yourself with other people. What would happen if we used our social media to glorify God and to elevate other people? If your social media feed is not doing that, take a break and say, God, reorient my way of thinking, how I'm using my time, my talents, my treasure to make an impact in the world. A great lunchtime discussion at uh, your dinner table might be this. Would Jesus be on social media? For you and I, examine your areas this week of what does it mean to break your mirror, to take a step, to live in humility, to elevate God and to encourage others around us. And as we end, how about this for a New Year's resolution? When someone asks you that you answer this way, my New Year's resolution is that I no longer live for myself, but I live for him who died and rose again on my behalf. If we church did that, Fairfield County would be a different place. You would be someone that is attracting people to follow you, to ask you questions, to say, what's different about you? Because you're not consumed with yourself looking in your own mirror. You're consumed with looking at all the people around you and how you can minister to them. So church, today, will we go outside these walls? Will we break the mirror that we look at each and every day? And will we see the people around us who are in desperate need of a Savior? They're around you. They need your help, your guidance. Be that light to them this week. We want to thank you for watching and listening to our sermons online. And we hope that uh, you will be inspired to live more like Jesus through these. Please check out blackrock.org for more information about our church. Know that you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. And also uh, know that you can give uh, to BlackRock and to our ministry through PushPay, through our mobile app, and on our website. Your uh, donations and your support of our ministry allows us to have uh, these videos online and for us to impact our community.